Hello, today I will be presenting the case study paper titled, What do we do? Lessons learned from conducting systematic reviews to improve HCI dissemination. This paper was co-authored by Zaydat Ibrahim, Pega Karimi, Dr. Akwesha Martin Hammond, Dr. Christina Harrington, and Dr. Katie Sick. In this case study, we highlight our experiences conducting two systematic review studies in HCI. The first being women's reproductive health research in HCI, and the second, the intersection of identity and older adults in health research. We identify lessons from enhancing how we can communicate our research, offering good examples where possible. While these lessons may not be universally applicable, they provide HCI researchers with the opportunity for introspection regarding how we convey our findings to the broader research community. We do not aim to be prescriptive in our lessons learned. Instead, we hope to spark collaborative conversations on how to report our primary research to better support science and future knowledge synthesis through systematic literature reviews. There has been a growing interest in systematic reviews. The earliest systematic reviews were published in 2014 at CHI, EATIS, and ITS. In our paper, we noted that 35 systematic reviews existed in the HCM di digital library, 17 were published at CHI, and five were published at DIS. Combined, both constitutes 63% of all systematic reviews published since 2014 in the ACM digital library. This indicates a growing interest in systematic reviews within the CKI community with a steady increase. A brief overview of systematic reviews. Systematic reviews were adopted from the field of medicine where it is considered a gold standard for evidence-based decision-making. Typically, process for searching to identification of papers within a corpus for review is represented in a PRISMA diagram as shown on the right-hand side of the slide. As you may already know, there are challenges with conducting systematic reviews. First, it is labor-intensive, requiring more research researchers involved. Secondly, there are delays between paper analysis and publication date. Before highlighting our case study and lessons learned, I must present our author's positionality. First, the authors of this case study paper are trained on a small subset of disciplines. We recognize that the HCI community is diverse, study designs, collaborations, participant context, community partnerships, legal and ethical considerations, and funding mechanism impacts how results are reported. And finally, we do not aim to unduly critique studies after the fact, but instead use we, we use current reporting tradition as an example of the challenges encountered to synthesize and understand our research afterward. We recognize that previously, some CKI sponsored publication venues had paper length limit for submissions, therefore limiting researchers from reporting with as much clarity. In the light of these observations, our lessons learned address the topic of reporting HCI findings. We offer insights into best practices for reporting where possible and we showcase instances of exemplary reporting, identify areas where improvements can be made and considerations for how we can enhance communi communication of our findings. In our case study paper, we present our experience conducting two systematic reviews, the first being a systematic review of women's reproductive health research in NCI, and the second being a systematic review on identity and older adults in health research. For case study two, please visit the CHI 2022 paper titled Examining Identity as a Variable of Health Technology Research for Older Adults, a Systematic Review, written by Dr. Christina Harrington et al. Our lessons learned and best practices cuts across three broad categories. One, search process and keywords, where we talk about keyword search and data curation from the ACM Digital Library and IEEE. Two, participants' demographics, where we discuss the following. Who are the participants? The sample size, demographics, including age and gender. Third, study methodology, where we uncover large, where we talk about large multi-part studies, study location, study duration, compensation ethics, and board approvals. For the purpose of this talk, I will only cover a few of the lessons learned. I encourage you to please check out our paper for the full details on our lessons learned and best practices.
Lessons learned, keyword search and search process. In keyword search, we encountered challenges with ambiguous keywords. For example, keywords in women's health research, the term period for menstrual period pulled unrelated papers that used period for time period. Similarly, in older adults research, a search for aging could pull up papers referring to aging in batteries. In this regard, we recommend researchers to iterate on keywords and research communities to coordinate on keywords and key terms. The second challenge encountered was in the use of ACM Digital Library. Currently, the digital library's search and filters still fall short of filtering by keywords and also involves a manual process of downloading papers in parts through the years. At the time of the systematic review, paper corpus available for, from ACM had only been curated up to 2017, leaving the years after 2017 for manual, manual download from the digital library. Therefore, our ACM wish list is annual updates of paper corpus and two, a library that allows for downloading results in one swoop as opposed to bits by bits. Lessons learned on participant demographics. Challenges for participant demographics as follows. First, we encountered papers where age averages and ranges were offered for some participant categories, but not for others within the same research report. We present a good exam exemplar in the image on the left from a paper by Wick Wilcox et al. In, this, in the research involving older adults, differences in reporting age range can be partly due to differences on how older adults or senior are defined in different parts of the world. However, definitions may not be included in some papers. So in this case, we recommend that in the method section, researchers could, should tolerate thoroughly and comprehensively answer the questions who are the participants in the study and which participant groups are we reporting in the paper? We also re recommend that researchers exercise caution when reporting age-related and gender-related data. Lessons learned in study design. In study design, while conducting systematic reviews of women's reproductive health, we encountered papers that reported large multi-part studies. In part, this is challenging as some parts of the studies were detailed and others did not offer as much detail of events within each part. Sometimes paper did not offer details in context, location, duration, and even more so for studies whose participants were for, for, from multiple countries. It was uncertain where the study was conducted. Therefore, to circumvent these challenges, we recommend creating visuals for multi-phase or multi-path studies. A good exemplar we have presented in the left-hand side of the slide by Bolesnikov et al. We also recommend reporting details on study locations, duration, compensation structure, or plan and ethics board approval. For more details on our case studies, lessons learned, and best practices, please read our full case study paper. Our key takeaways are as follows. Coordinate with research community on keywords. Describe participant demographics in detail provide a visual of study design and report ethics and compensation structure. Please connect with us to discuss more on this case study. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation.